Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're taking a look at the results from the most recent Gwent patch, because this is the first patch that includes changes that the players voted on using the new Balance Council system. And so, in case you didn't know, that is now the case. No longer are the Gwent developers making updates, it is now up to the players, and... So these are the things that the players voted to change, and we'll go through category by category. We'll highlight some of the things that we voted for in our previous vote coordination video, and maybe talk a little bit about some of the things we might vote for next time round, although the next voting session doesn't start up for another day. So, let's take a look. So, starting off with the power increase, and as a reminder, everything you see here is changing by exactly one value. So power increase means everything is increasing by one base power. Starting off with Vi, which is a little bit scary because I know maybe it's not quite as good as it used to be, but remember, Vi is built around replaying and reconsuming Vi every single turn. So although the base power might be increasing by one, this is functionally going to increase the number of points that Vi decks have by, I don't know, 12 points or something like that, so setting a statement right there with the first choice, and uh, I should also note, I believe the cards are all organized by provision cost, not necessarily by vote count, I don't think we have a way of knowing what the vote count is, so even though you see Vi at the top here, that doesn't necessarily mean that Vi was actually the top vote recipient in this category, just that it has the highest provision cost. Next, Saskia Commander, I mean, it's a strong card, but... I guess at 3 power, it wasn't that strong on the body directly, but that's not really why you play Saskia Commander to begin with, so I don't know, this one seems a little bit strange to me, but I guess, maybe? I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, though. Unseen Elder, also really strong card long term for the engine value, but increasing the base power makes it so that uh, from a point slam standpoint, he's a little bit better, and also a little bit harder to remove with damage. Gezros, another card that pretty strong. From an engine value standpoint, the base power isn't really the main reason why you play him, but once again means it's going to be a little bit harder to remove him, so he'll stay on the board a little bit longer in some cases. Brothens, similar story there. Phoenix, I mean, I don't really use it very often, but I guess that's a case to be made now for using it more for carryover. Crow Mother, another card that you can potentially replay multiple times from your graveyard, granted that isn't really something I've seen anyone do in a very long time, so yeah, I can understand. This card's been uh, power crept to a certain extent. Ruin, though, another card like Vi that you want to repeatedly consume, and every time you do that, it's going to get summoned back out. So, although we're increasing the base power by just one, in fact, in practice, it's going to be worth a whole lot more than that, so makes me a little nervous, the uh, approach that people have been taking on these power increases here. The Flying Redanian, another card that you can potentially get out multiple times, because uh, you could destroy it in any of a number of ways and get it back out if you've your maximum uh, nine coins, or in some cases seven coins. Vigo, a little bit more on the Assimilate side. We see that with Brothens as well up there. So yeah, Assimilate got nerfed to a certain extent a, a few months ago, almost a year ago at this point, probably. So I, I can see why people want to increase the base power, at least on some of the Assimilate engines. Nithral, understandably, I suppose. I mean... Basically, you want to play him early, have dominance so that you get the extra damage and then use that order ability to help maintain dominance, and that's getting a little bit hard to do, I suppose, given how a lot of other cards have gotten stronger and the Thrall had remained the same for a while. Black Rayla, I mean, hasn't been very good for a very long time, so understandable, I guess, that she gets a power buff. Vesemir, now this one's weird to me. Um, so he's obviously one of three cards in the Wolf School trio, and they were previously all the same values, so it's really strange to have Vesemir be the only one of the trio that has four power. I don't know if that's because eventually, next round, people are going to vote for Eskel and or Lambert, and we'll end up getting all of them up to four power, or if this is just some kind of weird joke where people think Vesemir is the most important of the three, and therefore he should be the strongest, so I don't know what to make of that. Cleaver's Muscle, another one that makes me a little bit nervous because, I mean, yes, it was pretty weak. On the other hand... Cards like Cleaver, and also Novigradian Justice, can summon out Cleaver's Muscles, so another card where, yes, it may just be one base power, but in practice, it's worth a lot more than that. Same story with Kedwini Revenant, I mean, this is another card that has been weak for a long time, but the argument against giving it a power buff like this has always been that, well, you buff one of the Kedwini Revenants, and it's gonna buff every other Revenant that you create, and that means it's a lot more than just one point. And so that's all the power increases, and that's generally my takeaway, is that people got a little aggressive here, and they weren't just cards that, uh, they could use a little more power. I mean, that was the case for some of them, sure, but we saw almost every single card, like Vi, 
Chrome Mother, Ruin, the Flying Redanian, and Kid Cleaver's Muscle and Kidwani Revenant that can be played, summoned, or created extra copies of multiple times. So that makes me nervous. Moving on to the power decrease. So again, not necessarily in order of votes received, but just in uh, provision cost, or rather, yeah, in provision cost order. So Torres, I mean, this one, along with Svalbard, and Sov, and Angus, and the Akarantia, all probably cards that we expected to see. So no big surprises there. They're all big cards in powerful decks, and in some cases, cards that you've included just about any deck for their faction. So probably a good sign that they need to be weakened. Yawn, understandably, I've heard a lot of people saying that they wanted to see him nerfed. I think that the... Beast power is probably not the best way to do that with him, though, because the main thing that he does is his deployability, and his power does not really affect that. You know, he's still going to get the value from his deployability. Yes, he's less of a point slam now. He was a decent point slam at 8 power before, but I'm just not sure this is really going to get the result that people are looking for. If he had gotten a provision nerf, then I might have seen it, though. Vayna Dane, big deployability and also engine value, so decreasing his power a little bit. Gets rid of a little bit of his long-term potential, since it'll be a little bit harder for him to stay on the board, but might not be that dramatic of a change. And Ishora, an engine, and a strong one at that. I know she got the Vice nerf a little bit earlier. The power nerf, I'm not really sure how much of a difference dropping from 8 to 7 power is going to be, because it's still likely going to take two turns to get rid of her. Philippe, this is one of the cards that we voted for. Ideally, I wanted to put him in the provision nerf category, but we had a lot of stuff we wanted to put there, so we put him in the power nerf category instead. And the idea here was that at six power, he was an extremely powerful engine and he was difficult to remove in one turn. Now at five power, hopefully it's more easy, it's easier to uh, remove him in one turn and that makes it a little more of a well-balanced card. Uh, I will never complain about mill nerfs. Nazca Sergeant, yeah, I mean, any card that can play multiple cards per turn, and one that's a 10-point slam basically unconditionally, at least once you get to round two or round three, which is not exactly a difficult condition to meet, yeah, this was this was overpowered. So, not surprised to see that. Reaver Hunters. This is definitely the most questionable one in the power decrease category, because, don't get me wrong, I hate Reaver Hunters as much as anyone does. However, it outright does not work at this point. It is a one point card because it cannot use its order ability if its starting base power is one. We tried to get clever. We voted for some indirect Reaver nerfs for some support cards so that Reaver Hunters were still playable, but not as strong. But uh, now this is definitely, even I can say, too heavy handed of a nerf here and would have preferred to have seen the other cards that support Reaver Hunters get weaker so that it's at least still possible to play Reavers just not as effective as it once was, because now this deck is completely busted. Alba Armor Cavalry, uh, it was a little bit annoying at 5 power, since you get a decent amount of base power, good control with the lock, and then it was a solid target for a card we'll talk about in a minute with Slave Driver, because it also had one armor, so it just makes it a little bit harder for people to mindlessly spam non-stop control, which I think has become way too common. Imperial Marine, really strong engine, also comes with the additional value of boosting or moving up some cards in your deck that you really want to see so yeah this card was getting thrown into a whole bunch of decks and probably did deserve getting weaker deacon i know that a lot of people have been struggling to face off against cultists recently so understandable to see that get nerfed then on the provisions increase side now just as a note here for the leader abilities that is a buff for anything else that is a nerf so we see a couple of leader abilities here Uprising and Jackpot, both leader abilities that have been weak for a while, so that's understandable. Although I would say Jackpot has actually been pretty decent in some seasonal events, but obviously that's not going to be the main way in which people are looking to balance out the cards. Eternal Eclipse, as we were just saying, that was a card that I know people have been struggling to face off against. The Cultists have been good for a while now, and I believe that means that this is now the only 15 provision cost card in the game that used to be the case for Masquerade Ball and possibly one or two other cards, but as of right now, it is the only 15 provision cost card. Temple, Admiral Runpoly, Heist, Battle Stations, all cards that I think a lot of people, myself included, assumed were going to get changed, nerfed in some way, and I deliberately did not vote for any of those, assuming that they were a really safe bet to get those nerfs. Stefan was one that I was less certain about and came very close to voting for this. So, personally, I am happy to see him here, although I am a little bit surprised that he got enough votes. Controlled, yeah, this is pretty strong. I'm uh, not surprised to see this show up. 
Uh, Vilgefortz, this is one of the ones that we voted for, although not one that I necessarily expected to be popular enough to receive this nerf. Our logic was basically that he's more or less a base Geralt with higher base power, same provision cost, can be used on anything. Yes, he summons out a card from your opponent's graveyard, although, or rather, from your opponent's deck, although that's usually not that big of a downside, since you can use him on any unit. And uh, that also supports Mill, which is, as I was saying before, not exactly an archetype that I'm the biggest fan of. So I'm surprised that he did, in fact, get enough votes to get nerfed, but I like it, because uh, that is obviously a card we voted for. Sigvald, big card in some big decks. Understandable that that's getting a provision nerf. Meta Generator's been strong for a while as well. Open Sesame, another card that's useful in a lot of big decks for uh, Syndicate. Thirsty Dame, now, yes, I totally agree that Thirsty Dame has been really strong for a long time, and in some ways probably deserved to be nerfed. On the other hand, the interesting thing here is going to be between Philippe's nerf, Admiral Ronpoli's nerf, and Thirsty Dame's nerf, is that going to be enough collectively across all those things to perhaps over nerf Nilfgaard statuses. Now, granted, that was probably the single top priority for me to nerf because, no joke, I faced 50% Nilfgaard status spam this past couple of weeks. So I think that's a pretty strong indication that it needed to be nerfed in some way, but maybe this was too far. Of course, only time will tell. Then Slave Driver, as I think I might have mentioned before, any card that can play multiple cards per turn, I think, needs to be either expensive or difficult to play because that is extremely powerful and it's really versatile to be able to do that. So, understandable. I think that Slave Driver got a provision nerf in that way. And we actually got 16 cards in this category, which 15 was supposed to be the maximum. So, I assume that means that something tied for the lowest number of votes and so they both got in. Again, this is not organized by the number of votes received, I don't think. So th I'm very curious if we can somehow figure out which two cards received the least number of votes, but tied to get into that last spot. So uh, Bare Knuckle Brawler is the last one. And another card that I think, I think people have been using in some of those really strong Syndicate decks. I think once upon a time it was five provisions before, then got buffed down to four provisions for a little while. And it was really strong then. I admittedly do like it a lot because Eventide Plunder, uh, getting this from Eventide Plunder is really good, especially in some seasonal events, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can understand why it got the provision nerf. Then finally into the provision decrease category, which as a reminder for leader abilities is a nerf for anything else is a buff. So we see Imperial Formation, Enslave, and Patricidal Fury all get uh, provision nerfs here. That's not terribly surprising. Those have all been leader abilities that have been pretty effective, and Imperial Formation really shouldn't have been at 16 provisions. That was pretty outdated, because uh, ever since they got the new Soldier Support, that's been strong for a while. And Phoebe's Assault getting buffed. This is pretty crazy. Of course, for a while, it was 13 provisions, then did get nerfed to 14 provisions, and I didn't really get the sense that anyone felt as though it needed to go back down to 13 provisions, so that looks like that's gonna help, I mean, almost every single... Uh, Northern Realms deck, so look out for this. I think that's probably going to be something that deserves some attention in the next round. Siege also dropping to 13 provisions now. Yes, sure, maybe Siege directly was not one of the strongest scenarios. I'll give you that. On the other hand, the other cards that go along with Siege, the Siege engines, uh, those have been incredibly strong as of late with all the order spamming with things like Onager and Demivent. So, this one makes me nervous as well, and with both these two things getting buffed, look out. Portal, yeah, I mean, this has been at 12 provisions for a while now, maybe once upon a time it was 11, but understandable, I think it's been uh, power crept quite a bit. Novigrad, on paper, is worth a fair number of points, I personally haven't really used it much at all, but... I guess I can see how it has low tempo, so maybe that's reason enough to give it a provision buff. Then Philavandrel just never quite gave the value we're looking for, at least not consistently enough, at 12 provisions, so I guess understandable that he gets a provision buff here. Philippa is a card that we voted for, and I think she's been really weak for a while, or I mean, once upon a time she was quite good, but that's a card that has really been overtaken by power creep, so I'm still not sure she's at a point where 
people are going to want to use her all that much. She might need another buff, either at this point, an additional provision buff. Maybe that might be a little too far. So maybe next time around, something like a power buff could get her just about at the value we're looking for. Magic Compass, this makes me really nervous as well. Uh, this is a card that, when it is good, it is unbelievably good. So uh, it's another one that I really didn't think anyone had thought needed a buff. And the fact that it did get a buff is concerning. So look out for more Magic Compass spammers. Verena, this is a card that I know when it came out recently, people thought it was underwhelming. And I think that especially after this provision buff, this is going to be one of the most underrated cards. I mean, this is basically a dire bear, but it's harder for your opponent to play around it, and it obviously works in bleed decks quite well, so I think this is going to be pretty solid. Roach did get nerfed to 10 provisions a little while back, it was on 9 provisions for a while, so going back to the 9 provisions here, I mean, it's a solid card that you can include in almost any deck. It's not overwhelming, so I guess I understand why people are dropping it back down to 9. Pulling the strings, one that when it works, can be fantastic. The point potential for it is great, but it's a little bit difficult to set up, so maybe that's the reason why people are dropping it down to five provisions. And Drigal Larva, now maybe it's just me, but I feel like, you know, you don't necessarily need to have additional support for Thrive Spam. I mostly Scratch Lot and uh, the Kashe are the things that I'm thinking of, and of course, those create more Drigal Larva, maybe the Drigal Larva itself isn't so much the issue, but it does make me a little nervous putting the uh, provision buff on this. Then Reaver Scout, final card we see here, again, not necessarily the lowest vote recipient, but is a card that we are giving a provision buff. This, of course, did very recently receive a provision nerf. This makes me extremely concerned as well, because like many of the cards we were talking about before, it's another card that can play multiple cards per turn. And that is generally a very powerful thing, very flexible thing, and it should be very expensive and or very difficult to do that. Otherwise, it makes ridiculous things that should not be possible from a balance standpoint are just not a good idea. Makes them possible. So to bump this back down to five provisions makes me really concerned. I think this is a really bad idea. Uh, the only silver lining I see with this is, yes, uh, well, at least one of the cards that you would normally combine with that Reaver Hunters is completely unusable, so this combo doesn't really work at all anymore. But of course, we have seen, especially as of late, people using Reaver Scouts for a whole bunch of other decks that are, in some cases, completely unrelated to Reaver Hunters. So I think this is still going to be an issue. So there's a look at all the cards that we've just voted to change for power and provisions. Again, everything you see here is getting changed by one power and one provision, respectively. Some of the things we voted for popped up here, and the next voting session does not open for, I believe, at least a, a day or so, 20 hours. So that gives us a little bit of time to think over the changes that we had made. So hopefully that means we have time to better understand you know, what exactly did we get ourselves into here, because there are some things that are understandable, things like the power decreases on the very obvious cards, but then there are other things where... Yeah, I can see how people were looking to make an impact, increasing the power of things like Vi and Ruhin, but did we really fully grasp the extent to which those changes would affect how good those decks that run those cards are? I'm not necessarily sure that we did. So, of course, now we get to see what we are getting ourselves into, and fortunately, it's only a couple weeks for this upcoming voting session, which means that we can change things again relatively soon. So uh, I will come out with a video talking about what changes we're going to want to make with our next votes. We had some successes there. We'll reflect more on uh, things we did and did not vote on that, that worked or did not work well last time around. And of course, we need some time to reflect on what we do and do not want to change as well. But thank you all for watching. Hope this was helpful and I'll catch you next time.